All right, a freakishly good morning to everyone and hello and welcome to the Sound Guy YouTube channel. And if you just tuned in, well, you've possibly tuned in because you want to learn how to make a transmission line speaker. Transmission lines fall into the quarter wavelength family. And if you can learn the principles within a transmission line, the likelihood is all other forms of cabinets are going to come really, really simple as you go deeper into horn theory. And that's really that simple. If you can learn how to apply the principles of a quarter wavelength transmission line design, the rest really do become a lot easier, right? So without further ado, like the rap battle that is happening at the moment, literally between all the crickets in the neighborhood, screaming out louder than most people locked in P. Diddy's basement, let's jump into this video. So first thing we need to understand about any quarter wavelength design is that we are going to need to work out some form of ratio. What does this ratio mean? Because quarter wavelength is, well, as it says, a quarter of a wavelength. So we need to start by picking a fundamental frequency, like how low do we actually want to go? If you want to go down to 35 hertz, well, you're going to use 35 hertz for this calculation. If you want to use 50 hertz, well, use 50 hertz for this calculation. It is really quite simple. Now, I'm going to use 40 hertz for this, right? I could go lower, I could go higher. That choice would be up to me or up to you. If I wanted to tune around the fundamental of our speaker, I would be using 35 hertz. Okay. So the way we're going to start this calculation off is we are going to enter the approximate speed of sound. This might be different to where you are. And in my case, I'm using 343 meters per second, and I'm going to divide this by 40 hertz. This is going to give me a really long tube of 8.57 meters. And yes, I said tube. I want you to think of a wind instrument like a flute. It's quite a small little wind instrument. Now, pause the video and do yourself a favor. Go and have a look at the size of a contrabass flute. It is ginormous. And when I mean ginormous, I mean in comparison to a standardized flute, it really is like the Loch Ness Monster version of ginormous, of flutes at least. Why is it so big? You will notice that with most instruments, the lower that we want to go in frequency, generally speaking, the larger they are. When it comes to things like pipe resonance, in order for us to produce at least like a contrabass, it needs to be really, really loud to go two octaves lower than middle C. I think it's middle C, it might be middle A. Middle C, middle A, I'm not sure. But two, octaves, two octaves lower versus a traditional flute, dang. What do you think? Ginormous? I agree. The same thing kind of applies to transmission line speakers. Transmission lines need to resonate at a fundamental tuning frequency. But it turns out that this quarter wavelength theory, as it states, we only need one quarter of this total length. So if we divide this value by four, we are still relatively small but in box terms relatively big could you imagine running around with a box which is 2.14 meters in length well that brings us to the second thing we don't necessarily have to have a 2.14 meter box right now i have drawn out three examples very primitive examples of what a transmission line could look like here we have the speaker on the front of the box and on the other side, we have an opening. If this is 2.14 meters in length, well, we have a 2.14 meter long tube of which we are using or capturing a quarter of a wavelength at this exit, meaning that we are amplifying the sound that is coming from here at one quarter wavelength. In the same instance, one of the things that we can do is change the general shape. So while we can't run around with a 2.14 meter box, perhaps we can divide this into two equal sections. Of which case, I only need to run around with roughly a one meter box. Simply by chopping that box in half, 
we can imagine that we have now glued together this half and another half and we've changed our footprint on the other hand we could go to the extreme and keep our box the same length as this middle box but we could create some form of advanced labyrinth in our design thus keeping our overall box dimensions the same but changing the overall internal length that we are dealing with so in this particular instance box b versus box c box c has twice the internal length of box b yet they are the same size which brings me to another thing it is an absolute myth that all transmission lines are ginormous in nature nope that is not the case it is very much driver dependent in fact most transmission line speakers with a generally well optimized driver that is good for most compact based reflex cabinets with a mid q and a respectable vas will in fact go into a box equal to if not even smaller in its counterpart base reflex meaning that if i'm working with a box volume of about 150 liters for a given speaker the likelihood is i will end up with a transmission line speaker roughly about 150 liters so no transmission line speakers are not always ultra large that is an absolute myth and something that you will experience as you develop your talent to design more transmission line speakers so with our primitive drawings out the way let's go and jump into horn resp and close our calculator all right so the way we're going to do this is go back to our input wizard we are going to select half space like with all of our previous videos we are going to again use a direct radiator only difference is now we're going to drop down to a transmission line we are going to be presented by three options normal mass loaded and offset i'm going to be covering normal in this video but i strongly recommend that you step back to our previous video where we looked at doing an offset base reflex design meaning that we had changed the distance between where the port is placed in relations to the driver this changes the overall response and resonances within our cabinet design go out and go check that one out the offset will make absolute sense because it's not really much different within our normal mass loaded transmission line speakers are still transmission lines with the exception that we are porting that mass loaded or that transmission line design making it a mass loaded it has some advantages segments right segments are kind of easy to explain i'm going to select two segments and just click next to bring up some form of illustration right we are going to be using conical for this particular design because all of our box or our tube right they are parallel to one another there is no expansion so they're all straight lines and equal to each other from point a to point b okay and if we look at this we are going to come out with something that looks like this right so if you were to imagine we were looking at this box over here or this box over here this initial part right where we started on to calculate our area times by some form of length which will give us some form of volume right this is going to be s1 the point at where our driver is located the center of that this distance is going to be or this part over here is going to be s2 and the distance from here to here is going to be l12 then the distance from the center of this driver to the edge of this box is going to be l23 and the distance from here to here in our area calculation is going to be s3 in this example all three of these with the exception of this is a 50 by 50 so let's look at these two and if we work on 50 by 50 centimeters we are going to get a volume or a ratio of area to length of 2500 centimeters so what i'm going to do is i'm going to load in our salto driver and let's type in salto sw1500 and i'm going to paste this in here 
Note it is saying that we are working with an OD or an offset driver. And it even tells us here in this bottom description bar, keep on looking over here, guys. If I hover over here, it's an offset driver horn with driver entry at point two, right? Or S2. It is saying to us, caution, S2 is less than SD. In other words, our speaker possibly is too big to fit in our box. Okay, did I hit calculate? I'm not too sure. Let's hit calculate again in any case. Now you can see, in fact, our driver is bigger than the area of our box. So we need to make some changes. To do this, I'm going to come back to input wizard, tools, loudspeaker wizard. No, I do not want to mask chamber resonances. And I'm going to start to plug in the values that we have within this box design. So 50 by 50 is going to give us 2,500. So let's go and change this to 2,500. And as we are moving this up, I want you to notice what is happening is that our volume is changing. Now remember, we don't have a box, right? Or a chamber. VRC is zero. There is no port. And the way this is calculating is the height times the width times the length, right? So L12. If we do the same to the rest of the box, right? Because it's all the same size, we are going to go up to 2,500, whoops, I see, 2,500 for the entirety of this cabinet. Da, da, da. And we need to do the same for rest three. The whole time, if you look over here, our volume is changing because it is area times by length, which gives us some form of volume. Now, we needed a box which was 2.1 meters in length. So we know that the distance between S1 and S2 is this value over here, L12, and the distance from here to here is L23, right? So if we want to make our box longer, we need to change the distance on L23. And we would need to change this out to 2.1 meters. Or what are we, 2.15? 2.1 meters, we're gonna stick with that. And Bob's your auntie. What do we have? Well, we have something that looks like a transmission line design. Now this brings up some of the pros and cons of most quarter wavelength principles and horns in nature. They are a little more resonant. When we have a downward slope, so in other words, we go from 2,500 to something smaller to something smaller, we essentially are tapering this box, right? We are going from large to small. We, in fact, will have a smoother response, but less loudness. A straight pipe is kind of in the middle. And if we go from smaller to larger, we are able to increase our overall loudness, unfortunately, at the cost of more resonance and harmonics within our box overall. The second thing that is important to take into consideration, that most instances we are looking at a relationship between L12 and L23, again, about a third. This may change depending on your driver and depending on your arrangements of how you bring your box together, but you can dramatically improve the overall response or at least the resonance on your box overall. It is also important to understand that we can still change this relationship of which we might need to come back here and adjust our overall box. Right now, in a simple way, we have essentially created a very primitive transmission line. If we were to look at the schematic, we could say that our driver is placed on the front of this box and we have an opening like with a secondary speaker on the very end of this. Okay. Quite easy to see. There is our speaker. We are roughly from this edge to the center of the driver, 77 centimeters, of which from the center of the driver to the very edge, 
we are 133 centimeters, giving us a total horn length of 2.1 meters. And that is a transmission line in its simplest form. So go ahead and play around. Change the relationship between your S1, your S2, S3. Make the box bigger, make the box smaller, make the line longer. Like what we have done in previous videos, always consider things like power handling and so forth. Try and come up with the most optimized design that you can and share your creation with us on YouTube. As always guys, if you need help or a little bit more of a technical requirement within your design, leave a comment on the YouTube comment section and I will try and get back to you with some assistance. For myself, Gareth, aka The Sound Guy, stay tuned, give us a like, give us a follow if you found this video helpful. For myself, good night.